Hello everyone, my name is Sam. I am a trainee consultant therapeutic radiographer specialising in brachytherapy and I work at the Norfolk and Norwich Hospital. Today we're joined by Ian who has very kindly offered to share his experiences of having high dose rate brachytherapy. So I'm going to ask him to introduce himself. Ian, I was wondering if you could just give a little bit of your background please. Yes, uh, fine. Good morning Sam. My name is Ian and uh, I'm 74 and um, retired, luckily, uh, after most of my uh, working life in, in the Royal Air Force as an engineer. Um, and I was diagnosed with prostate cancer really by accident, uh, in a way. I um, um, had a very bad uh, episode of sciatic pain and uh, went to my GP and they diagnosed a, a trapped nerve but gave me a blood test anyway, just to make sure that that was the correct diagnosis. And I ended up with a high PSA score. So uh, it was purely by accident that I luckily found out uh, when I did. Um, yeah, so that's how I knew I'd, I had it. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, the first question I'd like to ask you is, how did you learn about brachytherapy? From the team, really, and and the paperwork. I'm a, um, perhaps because I'm an engineer by training. I like to find out everything I can about a problem that occurs. So I really did read the documentation I was given at the and um, from uh, Prostate Cancer UK. Went on the internet, but very carefully because there's a a lot of um, inaccurate information. So I went on the NHS website and, um, you know, really uh, good websites and started learning about the whole treatment scheme from then. And to be quite honest, I was really interested in the brachytherapy side because um, I'm a member of Rotary International and some years ago was involved in fundraising to purchase the machine for the Norfolk and Norwich. So I, I remembered that when I was reading the paperwork. So I, I really did read up on, on brachiotherapy. So when the, the team that were looking after me started talking about it, I sort of had a fair, fair understanding. And I think that I had a fair understanding of the whole thing. I think the, the more you learn about a problem, the less fearful it is, I think. Absolutely. And were there any specific questions you asked the team when you were speaking to them? I think that the one thing that did concern me a little was having a general anaesthetic. I last had a general anaesthetic in about the mid 1970s, and it wasn't a particularly um, good experience. But they told me life has moved on since then and, and things are, are much improved, which it, it proved to be so. Proved good. To be so, yeah. And you've chose, you know, you discussed about some of the reasons why you were interested in brachytherapy. Um, what helped you to make that final decision? Was it talking to your family, the colleagues at the hospital, or kind of other patients who had been through it? No, there's colleagues at the hospital. Really, I didn't know anyone else who had uh, who had had prostate cancer. Um, I find it's for me. I don't mind talking about it, but a lot of people don't like. Uh, talking about the fact they've had cancer. That's what I found out since. And what I liked about the idea was the fact that it was targeted. Uh, I could understand, you know, having uh, just the radio radiotherapy uh, does or can cause damage locally, which is fine. Um, but the fact that this was targeted struck me as being a much better way of delivering the treatment than just as a general, although I had to have the uh, other type as well. But that's the bit I liked, that it was actually targeted and we'd gone through the various scans and things to actually, uh, so the team knew exactly what they were dealing with. And it just struck me as being uh, a very sensible way of doing business. Yeah, absolutely. And you've already mentioned one of your anxieties beforehand was having the general anaesthetic. Was there anything else alongside that or was it just that? And how how was that resolved? Did you speak to anyone about that at all? Yeah, I, I, on, on the day I was speaking to the, the anaesthetist uh, and I must confess, 
setup, it was absolutely fantastic. I went there first thing in the morning, met by a, a nurse taken to a room where they gave me, uh, I could get changed and, and get myself ready for it. And talking with them, that nurse there was, was really well worthwhile. And, and she explained that, uh, you know, life has moved on since the 70s. Because I, I, I thought it was strange I was having a general anaesthetic, but was only in for one day. You know, and she said, no, no, no. When I had my last one, you were in for a week, but things have moved on. And she put a lot of my mind at rest, yeah. That's good. And you must have had lots of other meetings with the radiotherapy and brachytherapy team beforehand as well? Yes, I I, I found them uh, very, very good. They certainly answered all the questions that I could think of, and I did think of lots. I think that the more you read, the better, as I said before, but it does raise questions. And they were really helpful, and I never felt that I was using up their valuable time. You know, when whenever we met, I could spend as long as I wished talking to them. And same on the phone every time. Not often, but I did phone up a few times. And they re replied to my phone calls very well. I was actually really pleased with, with the way I was treated at the... That's good to hear. And then before the treatment, did you have to do any preparation for yourself physically or mentally to kind of get yourself ready for it? No, not really. I, I, I found it quite, um, well, what's the word? Amusing is not quite the right word, but quite simple. You know, considering what was going to happen to me, I, I was really uh, surprised in a way that I didn't have to do anything. Although the worst part of the whole experience, I think, was when they take a biopsy. That was a very strange procedure. Not painful, just very strange and embarrassing procedure. And that will have happened before <coughs> before the brachytherapy at your that, time that, of diagnosis. That, yes, that was in the in the lead up to deciding what, what sort of treatment. And when the the team offered me the, the, the different source of treatment, one of which was no treatment, which uh, certainly wasn't on the list. But yeah, I, and I, I did. I, I like the idea of the brachytherapy because it was, you know, that targeted thing just seemed to me a great idea. And I must confess, as I helped pay for it, I fancied a go with it, you know. So you've had all your kind of meetings with the anaesthetic team beforehand. You've done a little bit of preparation. You've read up. So then what actually happened on the day of your treatment? And, you know, were you nervous on the day? Did you see the anaesthetist again? Um, and what? What were you aware of what was going to happen on the day? No, I, I wasn't very nervous, to be quite honest. Um, that, that's not being brave or anything. It's just, as I say, I think that the knowledge you gain, and if you really do make sure you understand what's happening, it you, you know what's going to go, and that takes the fear away. I say I went to the North about seven in the morning. They looked after me um, in, in this daycare area. Then they escorted me across the whole of the hospital, I think, to, to actually where the uh, procedures were being taken. And then I met the, the consultant and the anaesthetist and we went through it all over again. And again, I was asked, you know, am I, you know, am I sure I'm doing, you know, I'm happy with all this. Yeah, and I was. It, it was a very pleasant experience uh, up to that point. Then when the uh, I had my anaesthetic, that was it. That was that was over. Then uh, I knew nothing until I woke up back in my room in the day cent daycare center in the other side of the hospital. So as to the procedure, I have no idea because <laughs> I was asleep for the whole thing. And uh, when I woke up uh, back in at the other side of the hospital, I felt really fine. There was some pain, but uh, they gave me some medication for the pain. But I was happy to leave the hospital straight away, but um, they wouldn't let me do that for obvious reasons. So I had to lie around for two or three hours to make sure I was fully recovered. But yeah, I, I, I was good to go. Once, once I woke up, I was good to go. Good. And did you have to have a catheter in after the procedure at all? No, I didn't, thank goodness. That's something I read up and I thought, oh, I just hope I don't have to have that because that doesn't sound particularly uh, 
uh, a good procedure to have, but no, I, I didn't. And uh, yeah, apart from some pain, which which uh, the medication they gave me controlled very easily, uh, and that didn't last for long, it, it, it was fine, absolutely fine. And were you able to get back to kind of normal life within the next couple of days afterwards, yeah. kind of normal routine? Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it was very... You know, the actual procedure, as I said, was painless because you're asleep. Uh, and, and the level of discomfort afterwards w was 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 not bad at all. And a couple of days, yeah, I, I was uh, happy to carry on as usual. Good. So after the procedures, we do, you know, consent you for some side effects. Uh, how long was it before any side effects started? And uh, how did they make you feel? And did you get any help with those at all? Yeah, I think it's it's difficult to say which side effects are caused by what because I had the brachiotherapy and then uh, twenty days of uh, normal radiotherapy. Um, so sort of afterwards, yes, I I do have some issue with uh, my uh, bladder control, but I I talked to the team and they've given me some uh, medication which is certainly assisting uh, and that that issue is gradually getting better. It was it was never really, really bad, but it, it could at times be a little embarrassing. So, but that is just about over now, I think. Uh, it, it's uh, a lot, lot better. Good. And is there any kind of advice that you were given or kind of anything you'd recommend to anyone else thinking about having the treatment, you know, about speaking up at the first, you know, as soon as you're worried or anything like that? I think so. Talk talk to your team. The, my the team I, I was involved with was absolutely fantastic, and really read and understand the 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 documents you're given. You know, knowledge certainly does dispel fear. Uh, and at the, at the end of it, you know, by the time it came to having the treatments, I was really quite um, quite content. I, I wasn't particularly overly worried. Yes, they do go on and say, you know, there is a percentage chance you will get this, a percentage chance you will get that. But just look on the positive side. There's a good chance you won't get any of it, any side effects at all. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really happy when I had it because I think I'd learnt as much as I could about it. Good. And then after the brachytherapy, once you've recovered, um, did you kind of access any any kind of services at the hospital afterwards, or was it then just the radiotherapy as planned after? It was just the radiotherapy, uh, and then I, I, as I mentioned before, I, I talked to the team on the phone uh, about my bladder control, uh, and they prescribed some drugs, uh, which is certainly helping. And other than that, I haven't had to do anything really, and. Um, uh, no, no, no side effects at all, apart from that one. So I'm, I'm happy with the whole procedure. Yeah. Did you find there was any social or emotional impact on you about having treatment for your prostate cancer? No, no, I didn't. Um, I've actually, be, because of the, the fact that I'm a Rotarian and uh, helped raise funds for the machine, I put an article in our Rotary magazine describing the event. And I've had people then come to me to talk to me about it when they've contact, contacted or had the disease diagnosed after reading the article. And I'm, I was really happy to, that they did. And I am talked to them, you know, quite happily. And because that, uh, that article is reproduced in my local town magazine, uh, people do ask, you know, friends of mine ask how it's going and everything. But yeah, it was fine. Oh, that's excellent. And if you had to go back to the very start of your treatment pathway, would you choose the brachytherapy again? Oh, yes. Yeah. It, it, it's a funny, funny thing, prostate cancer, because you don't have any symptoms. So you don't know you've got it. You don't know which part of the treatment fixed it because you were never ill as such. So, yeah, I, I would just go through the whole the whole thing again. The only thing I, I would do differently in my life was about six or seven years ago, I did have a PSA, which was normal. Um, my GP at the time said, don't don't have them every year. It's a waste of time. I wish I disregarded his advice. And now when I talk to people, 
I just advise them, you know, to to have a test every year. I, I know it's not a perfect test, but if I would caught it earlier, I'm sure it'd have been a lot easier to to control. And, you know, you, you seem to have spoken to lots of people who are thinking about having brachytherapy or have asked some questions about it. Is there any kind of top tips that you give to them, you know, apart from having your PSA checked and reading the information? Is there anything you kind of give to them to take away? I, I, I just think I, I, I tell them it's it's fine. You know, it's, it's a procedure that doesn't hurt, that um, does help. And for me, there, there are little side effects. and. I, I just think it's it just makes sense to me to if you're offered it to have it because as I say from an engineering point of view it just makes sense that if you've got a problem target it. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Ian, for sharing your experiences with us today. It's been val valuable to hear from the patient's uh, side of the treatment, and I'm really pleased that you had a positive outcome from it. So, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Thank you, Sam.